Okay, so now uh, in a current affairs session, today we can discuss about the Sri Lanka crisis. Okay, since it is a very close neighbor, the issues, what's happening in and around Sri Lanka, it's very, very important for India. Moreover, uh, compared to any other country, for us, it's very, very important. Particularly for if you are writing any public service commission examination right now, in the current year itself, you can expect the question from here. Okay, so here, uh, how the questions comes, you no need to go for any kind of volatile information. You try to collect the information why Sri Lanka is going facing this economic crisis now. What went wrong? That you should know. And the entire economic status of uh, export and import, which are the contents they are exporting it, which are the contents they are importing it, and who are the major players, where and all they have taken the loan. All those things you need to, what do you call, look into that because any angle the UPSC can raise the question. Okay, so that is what we are going to see here in this uh, class. Uh, Sri Lanka is a, what do you call a mid, middle income country as per the World Bank, as well as per the, uh, what do you call the Asian Development Bank report. If you see that they are coming under the, they are not neither underdeveloped nor developed countries. They are in the mid income countries. Okay, so Sri Lanka, the major deficit, what the experts are claiming it, why, uh, the economic crisis they are facing it right now it is primarily because of something called twin deficit twin deficit what they have faced in 2019-20 and followed by 21-22 okay so what do you mean by that the budget shortfall alongside the current account deficit okay one is a budgetary deficit another one is a current account deficit these two things current account deficit means you know where uh, the balance of payments are uh, imbalance whenever there is a country going for export and import. Budgetary deficit means within the financial year, within the financial year, whatever the expenditure and in, uh, what you call income, they are generating it. Whatever the finance minister, they are posting it in their uh, assembly. There itself, there is a deficit. Okay, so these, these uh, two things are hitting them very hard. Okay, the two in a large gap, which is uh, not possible to manage it. Okay, so that is what we are going to see how they, what went wrong that we'll see step by step. So Asian Development Bank, they had given the report in 2019, Sri Lanka is a classic twin deficit economy. Sri Lanka is a classic twin deficit economy in the year 2019. Twin deficit signal that country's national expenditure exceeds its national income. Okay. And that its production of tradable goods and services is inadequate. You got the point. The overall production of the country is tradable goods and services, whatever they are making it in a given a year. They are not in a position to, uh, what do you call, uh, bring back the money because their expenditure, national expenditure is exceed than its national income. The basic thumb rule of uh, economy is you have to spend within your income. Spend within your income. Okay, this is the basic uh, thumb rule. Okay, whereas the country itself, it is gone overboard. So this, this is not a something like a new crisis, all of a sudden the things are happening and the country is going for bankruptcy. Uh, it never happened all of a sudden. The things will go step by step. So you need to make yourself, uh, what do you call it? Correct the things, whereas the political leadership were failed to do all those stuff, okay. So now the major uh, crisis, the economic crisis, what they are facing it, you need to know the reason. Suppose in your IAS mains or in uh, prelims, if they are asking you to point out which are the points are led to economic crisis in Sri Lanka, then you need to know what are the steps, okay, what are the things they have faced. Forex crisis is currently they are facing it. That means that they don't have any Forex reserve much so that they can import oil or any other crucial things which is needed for the country. That was not happened. Why it has happened, the Forex crisis? Because of in a long term, 2019-20, what they have done, they have completely banned chemical fertilizer ban across the country. What for? They want to shift back to the organic form. You can ask, sir, this is a good step. Uh, in fact, the organic farming is well and good. 
why uh, it backfires sri lanka because what they have done it is a good step but they have completely banned the entire sri lanka the chemical fertilizer ban what happened they forced everybody to go for organic farming but in organic farming what happened it lead to the lesser production in the first few years your production capacity of food grains or any other agri products that lead to lesser amount of production than normally what you are getting it from by the chemical based agriculture since all of sudden they have banned the entire chemical fertilizer across the state and they forced the people agriculture to go for organic farming farmers with no other option they need to go for organic farming but the overall production has shortage shortage in the production when the shortage in the production what happened it lead to the almost the supply is less the demand is more automatically the price raised is happened so this is one of the primary reason why the sri lanka the prices of recently you may have seen in whatsapp message uh, the normal uh, grocery items normal day to day uh, fmcg products are prices are uh, lead to skyrocket in sri lanka because of these uh, production capacity is less one side another side they were not in a position to import import the goods from outside because they had a forex crisis suppose if the production is less it's well and fine if you have a good amount of forex uh, amount foreign exchange then automatically the country will import so overall they can able to maintain the prices domestically that was not happened so the one side the forex crisis another side the production within the domestic area it is not uh, what do you call it, properly working out okay and as the asian development bank uh, clearly said uh, their expenditures are exceeding the income expenditures are one side expenditures are exceeding than the income and the overall production capacity is not up to the standard okay and the another things what they have done lowering income slab as a political strength the previous regime when they went for the political campaign just to appease the people they simply announced that we will once if we come to the power we will reduce your income slab the income tax slab of the country will be reduced and they have done it when they are when they are doing it without much calculation how much amount of money they are going to lose it because one side their production is not up to the standard another side there is a forex crisis were looming but the political leadership some of them missed the bus these two major thing and they went ahead with their political statement they started lowering the income slab what happened another blow to the government income sources the government income sources automatically it started disappear that is also happened the lowering income slab that is another blow okay and under the major reforms they were not done say for example if you take india we have done the gst reforms gst is one of the major reform what india has made recent past if you see it started around somewhere around a few years back and there was a lot of criticism and it looked like a tax rates are very high and it cripples the indian society this and that well and good but right now in a financial crisis of covid and the covid lockdown and other stuff during that time also what we made we could able to uh, what do you call unanimously could able to collect month on month 1 lakh plus crore we can able to collect it the recently also we have reached almost 1.4 lakh crore collection uh, post pandemic in the month of march okay february march so these reforms this kind of long term reforms were not taken care by the political leadership they were still in the freebies regime they are just giving the freebies appease the people Uh, without uh, keeping in mind what's going to happen in their economic treasury it is clear and the another major impact what they have done the reducing the vat what they have done the 15% vat they reduced to 7.5 okay the vat is nothing but value added tax so when this vat is reduced further it reduces the income potential to the government the government income potential has further come down so these are the major points you need to remember certainly it can be asked in your exam what are the major things what the sri lankan government have done that led to the economic crisis next is rejection of imf reconstruction advice earlier two years before uh, based on the asian development uh, ba- banks report uh, white paper on uh, sri lankan economic crisis the imf imf is nothing but international monetary fund international monetary fund means what Uh, where they will come and assist you anybody 
i am out will come into the picture only in a particular uh, situation where they will come and help you balance of payment crisis whenever there is a balance of payment crisis balance of payment means what uh, i am importing certain things but i am not in a position to uh, what do you call that? pay back because i don't have a dollars i don't have a foreign exchange reserve so in that case I, but i have to import the essential items which is very much needed for the country's economic growth or something okay so those times the imf they came forward they had given the reconstruction advice that means no uh, what do you mean by that how you can imf it does the what do you call it? amount of loan to the country based on basket of token basket of uh, token or they will call it as a quota system okay the base, overall based on your export and import history they will give some amount of quota based on within that quota you can what do you call it? you can uh, get the foreign exchange reserve what do you call it? loan from the imf and you need to uh, fulfill whatever the condition they are uh, putting forward so the imf simply they won't give they will they will list out what are the things you need to do so that your uh, balance i mean the, the bank statements will be proper not in red it, it may become a uh, green you got the point so the steps what they are giving it may be what you call uh, reducing your expenditure asterisk to message or uh, what you call uh, uh, increasing the tax rate or uh, long term reforms it may not be acceptable by the people but you have to do certain things are may not be acceptable to the people but you have to do so that uh, the country may track back into the proper economic uh, development so these kind of advice will be given by the imf i mean when a country is facing the balance of payment crisis they, they not only give the currency i mean dollar just to take care of yourself they'll try to do the loan with a condition and the condition means they the economic experts will advise you what are the things need to be done so that your balance of books will be in a proper shape okay but those advices were not accepted by sri lanka so they were not in a position to execute the imf whatever the condition they are doing it you got the point so that is the meaning of rejection of imf for reconstruction advice okay next is the rejection of indian project with subsidy earlier itself when the chinese are entering into the sri lanka during that time itself for the developmental projects india opposed them you give the project to us and uh, we will establish it and the project comes with a subsidy subsidy in the sense what suppose if i am giving 1 crore rupees maybe 50 lakh rupees uh, what do you call uh, you need to repay me another 50 lakh might be a development kind of subsidy as a friendly gesture india used to do okay but what they have done due to the policy crisis due to the political leaderships were not ready to cooperate with india they simply rejected india and they went to the china you got the point so chinese what they do they give the loan and you have to pay back them completely 100% with interest with interest as of today if you see that for china alone sri lanka need to pay around 3.5 billion dollars 3.5 billion dollars plus interest they need to pay so it's a high debt from china so uh, so whatever the income they are generating it and they were forced to repay the interest as an interest payment for uh, china as well as for even for imf later they have taken the loan okay uh, that that is called sovereign bond is the international sovereign bond that also they need to repay that also they need to repay so that was the major crisis all, all these points if, if you see we simply call it as a forex crisis you got the point that means what forex crisis means what sri lanka doesn't have a enough forex reserve so they were not in a position to import anything from outside so that is called forex crisis but these are the points which led to the forex crisis you got the point whatever the points we discussed now these are the point that led to the forex crisis okay so the next is the current leadership leadership is nothing but rajapakse brothers okay the current president of sri lanka is kotabaya rajapakse he is the current uh, head and the before that we have uh, maitri pala srisena till uh, 2019 and before that 2015 to 
uh, I mean, till 2015, Mahindra Rajapaksi. Okay, and all of them are brothers. And they have a strong control over the political uh, hegemony. Yes, and they were not in a ready to position to what you call it, take back the advice from somebody. And even now, if you see that the Gotabaya Rajapaksi, when the people are demanding it, even the opposite parties are demanding it, they are not ready to resign themselves. Okay, so that is another major issue. Okay, so here you need to know uh, what are the exports, what is the major income source for Sri Lanka? This you need to understand. What are the major income source for Sri Lanka? So income source for the country, you can easily identify what are the goods they are exporting it and where they are exporting it. Okay, so the major income source, if you see that, they are exporting textiles and apparel, tea and spices, it's a tea growing country and spice growing country, electronics, electronics, IT services, even they have an IT software companies, IT services, rubber manufacturer because it's a tropical country, very close to equator, so they are manufacturing good amount of rubber, fish, it is an island country, you have fish and precious stones previous stones. These are the major products and the very, very limited products and the exports are happening as of latest one, $15.1 billion. $15.1 billion. But if you see that this is an export, but you know how much they need to repay the amount that itself it goes around $50 billion. All put together. Overall, all put together, they have around $50 billion worth. That means overall in GDP, what they have almost 70 percentage, it goes for the debt in terms of GDP. So it's, it's a huge crisis. Okay. And the main exporting partners are US contribute 25 percentage. Next is UK, almost 10 percentage. India is around 6, 6 percentage. Germany, 5.7. Italy is 5.3 percentage. It is clear that they are the major export partners. In this, the major export, uh, if you see that these two, the first two products are, it's a major export from Sri Lanka, keep it in your mind. Garments and tea and spices, particularly garments and tea. Okay, suppose if at all, if there is a question, you need to maintain this order. Sometimes in your examination, they will ask you to arrange the order of uh, export partners. Say, for example, they'll give the list of these countries. You should not simply say that, okay, India is a neighboring country, it's a big player. So India is, uh, they are exporting more to India. That's not the case. It is clear. India importing only 6% from uh, Sri Lanka, whereas the US, it goes more. US, UK, these countries are getting more. Primarily these countries, what they will get? They will get garments and tea. You got the point. Tea and spices. All these countries, they are making it. And imports, how much they are making it? As per the latest report, it is $20.6 billion. So here itself, if you see that almost around $5 billion are difference. This is per annum. This is per year. It is clear. So here itself, you have a trade deficit. Okay. So here the overall, the rough picture is given. Sri Lanka was worth of $84 billion by nominal gross domestic product. By nominal calculation. Nominal calculation of entire economy, Sri Lanka is worth of $84 billion per year. By, by in terms of gross domestic product, uh, nominal gross domestic product, okay, normal GDP, whereas $296 billion by purchasing power parity. There is something called purchasing power parity. What do you mean by that? Purchasing power parity. That means that they will say the Sri Lankan currency uh, how much they can purchase in the international basket of goods uh, compared to other countries, compared to other uh, dollar, euro, or any other uh, uh, pound, uh, compared to them, how much they can purchase, how many goods they can purchase for any given value. Say, for example, if you take one dollar of US dollar and the corresponding value of Sri Lankan currency, whatever it comes, okay, and you take the basket of goods, uh, by using $1, how much I can purchase? By using corresponding value of this $1, Sri Lankan currency, how much I can purchase? It is clear. So based on that also, they'll calculate. That is called 
purchasing power parity method to calculate the uh, economic uh, uh, potential of the country. That is in the task part, it is 296 billion. The country had experienced an annual growth of 6.4% from 2003 to 12. Well above its regional peers. It is good till 2012, everything went good. This growth was driven by growth of non-tradable sector. Keep it in your mind. Non-tradable sector. What does it mean? Which the World Bank want to be both unsustainable and unequitable. When from 2012-13 itself, they had given the report. Okay, that means what? What do you mean by non-tradable sector? Anybody? Non-tradable sector. That means that they are not doing some illegal work or something. You understand? Uh, we have a WTO. Okay, World Trade Organization. They will put a lot of restrictions, a lot of rules and regulations. How the country should pack the product. Suppose if you are growing tea, uh, how you need to process it and who you should employ. There should not be any child labor. There should not be any uh, bonded labor. There should not be any slave labor. Okay. And it should be, and you should do them a proper adequate, uh, what do you call it? Proper adequate salary to the people, those who are working in the particular tea garden. And once the tea leaves are plugged, and that should be properly processed, okay, as per the international standard. And uh, it should be packed in a proper manner, uh, there is international rules are there that is called PITO uh, sanitary packing. Okay, these are all the rules that you will study in a WTO. So they will put a rules like how the things need to be packed. Okay, and uh, what do you call it? in that there should not be any plastic or uh, internationally permission limits should be allowed and everything. And pricing should be properly should keep then you can go for the export. You got the point. So th these are the things, the rules and regulations will be given by the International Trade Organization, that is WTO. Okay, suppose, you know, everybody knows that there is a lot of movies also came. Sri Lanka is known for a bonded labor where the Sri Lankan uh, tea gardens, are, the employees are unsustainable. They were paid very low and uh, they were tortured. So like that, there is a lot of complaints are there. So when these kind of complaints are there, you just imagine it when I have a bonded labor in a tea garden, I'm not spending much on the tea leaves and my processing method will be very poor. My packaging will be very poor. At the cost when I'm fixing the price, these prices will be naturally cheaper than my competitors across the globe. It is clear. So that all the countries will purchase from me. But when I'm purchasing it, one side this W2O to keep put the rules. When they are keep putting the rules, these countries, whoever the countries they are purchasing from Sri Lanka, after some time, uh, they will not be allowed to purchase. That is the meaning of, uh, what do you call it? Both unsustainable and unequitable. You got the point. You are making a money right now in 2012-13, but this cannot be sustainable because the World Bank has warned them. Okay, why? Because you are not following the rules and regulations which is imposed by the WTO. You got the point. So naturally, after sometimes what happened? These people, will be, because the international pressure will be given on the inputs. See, you are purchasing from Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka, they are using the child labor. So inter, you have already signed the convention uh, called the child labor uh, prohibition or prevention. That means you should not purchase tea from Sri Lanka. So automatically what happened? The import order from Sri Lanka will be stopped. But if you ask the Sri Lanka to go ahead with the implementing all this WTO, what happened? That may not be possible because they haven't done any reforms. They were not in a position to pay a huge amount of money for them. And the structural reforms are not done properly. So what happened? The whole business has become unsustainable. That is the meaning of it. The growth has slowed since then. We got the point. After 2012-13, what happened? The growth started coming down. In 2019, with an income per capita is around 13,620 uh, as per the PPP model, and 3,852 was a nominal US dollar. Sri Lanka was reclassified as a lower middle income nation by the World Bank from a previous upper middle income status. When it happened in 2019 itself, 
2019 itself they announced I, i'm just scaling down your status like upper middle income status to lower middle income status why because you are not following international rules and regulation which is imposed by which is normally imposed by wto am i clear so th these are th these are all the major steps what they have done okay and the next important thing is where and all the sri lanka is importing it importing it the major import comes from mineral fuel including petroleum products the entire uh, 100% imports out of that petroleum products and mineral fuel goes for 12.3% machinery including computers 9% electrical machinery equipment vehicle 1.1% textile only fabric you understand fabric they will import again the finished products will be exported the garments will be exported that is what we have seen in the export that is uh, 5% plastic 3.7 cotton 3.3 heavy metals 3% ship and boats 2.8% iron steel and aluminum 2.8% all these things you have to note down because this can be asked primarily in your exam okay so in upsc what they will do they'll not ask you this percentage you no need to remember the percentage but this order it's very important order is very important again you can easily fix it mineral fuel including petroleum products occupy the top of the chart okay these are the major imports okay and exporting goods also very very limited and again uh, what you call it? that was not done properly it was not sustainable that was the major reason okay and who are all from where they are importing from okay the major imports from china they are importing 22% from india 19% from uae 5% malaysia 4% singapore 3% remaining other countries would be very similar very small okay so the major importer again china and india when it comes to the exports also we have seen china i mean the export when they are exporting it it goes for us primarily uh, whereas the import it comes from china and india it is clear so th this hierarchy also is it important so where the imports are coming primarily to sri lanka china india uae malaysia and singapore he is the current uh, president of india i mean uh, i'm sorry president of sri lanka that is uh, gotapaya and uh, there is a huge amount of uh, uh pressure on him to resign but he is not ready to step down even in this current scenario okay in fact they are offering what they have done recently what these people have done the people started thronging his house and it has started banging and uh, what do you call uh, firing the buses and vehicles in front of his house out of panic he declared emergency across the state it happened emergency was declared by him okay emergency was declared but as of today the emergency was removed emergency removed okay and instead of that what he has offered he offered what he called it? combined cabinet combined cabinet joining from ruling party plus opposite party both ruling party and opposite party joined together they want to form the government and they they will take care of the entire crisis issue but that was completely rejected by the opposite party and in fact even the ruling party they have resigned the ruling members also they have resigned even the elected members and now the situations are gradually going out of control so we need to see in a current scenario he has to resign that's the condition right now any time that news you may get okay so during this in this backdrop india is a major pillar of support for sri lanka and we are also assisting huge amount of money and other assistance and overall they have realized it what are the problems they are facing it from the china and other uh, what you call bilateral relations at the cost of india okay so recently during this crisis in the last two weeks time india have made six different kind of agreement with china okay to boost bilateral cooperation in diverse sectors like technology fisheries hybrid power projects 
uh, these are the areas that we we have done a mou with them and the bilateral agreements were done and india's uh, strategy towards sri lanka is two things one is we need to have a close watch on sri lanka because chinese are sitting there chinese are our enemy is sitting there and uh, sri lanka is located strategically at the entry point of india okay so unless until we monitor them what is happening here it be, it may become a costly for us in future so we were uh, really worrying the chinese president and their construction of uh, port activities in sri lanka last few years at the cost of rejection of indian projects but in the current scenario sri lankans were not having much options so they need to fall back to india at that they have done okay so that situation we have grabbed it properly and indian high commission they went for the six different kind of mou with a complete strategic uh, what you call uh, that gives you huge amount of eye power in and around entire india okay one is india provide grant assistance for the implementation of sri lanka unique digital identity okay it is almost like our uh, aadhar card you can say sri lanka unique digital identity program with india's grant assistance providing maritime rescue coordination center this is very important this is it is purely the defense pact we can say the maritime rescue coordination center that means what our naval ship coordinate with sri lankan naval ship and they'll go for a maritime uh, what you call rescue coordination across sri lanka the entire sri lanka will be circum navigated and will be completely monitored by our navy as well as the sri lankan navy so naturally we can come to know what is happening in and around chinese port in sri lanka okay how the chinese are strengthening themselves what is their plan so that we can have a close look on them so in that aspect this is very important next is hybrid power projects in three major islands of jaffina because this is very very important strategic islands in terms of uh, uh, the relationship between india and china and uh, sri lanka these islands are very very important this is closer to tamil nadu three islands of jaffna and also on cooperation development of fisheries harbor in sri lanka that means we are going to establish our own power project particularly the wind turbine wind turbine projects will be established in these three islands with the help of india and we will establish the permanent stations there so that we can able to completely monitor that means these islands will be completely under our control in coming days once the project is established it is clear so that we can able to closely monitor what uh, chinese are having in their mind it is clear next is establishment of modern computer labs and smart boards with customized curriculum software in 200 schools in delhi district in a delhi district next is this is very important this is very crucial sushma swaraj institute of foreign service sushma swaraj institute of foreign service and bandaran aige international diplomatic training institute these two join together they will work together and we will assist them we will train them uh, the entire sri lankan uh, uh, foreign affairs we will assist them and we will hand hold them on the foreign affairs that means what the entire sri lankan foreign affairs will work with the indian brain will work with the indian brain that means we can able to easily control them psychologically what to do what not to do so that our great interests are completely served and over and above what we are giving it we are giving the money swap facilities that means uh, sri lankan currency and indian rupee can be swapped for any purchase or something they don't need to pay in dollar if they want to get it any important essential items and uh, our ios indian oil corporation will provide oil oil and uh, we have already extended already given 1 billion dollar assistance and we have achieved another 1.5 billion dollars assistance in terms of this kind of subsidy or essential good supply or petroleum products or through in the form of currency swap okay so all these things are it is uh, given to them so th th this become a major relief situation for them because they need a essential products to continuously supply to sri lanka without any hindrance in a current scenario so that may be possible from india based on the currency swap model
It's clear. So any doubt so far in this? So I have explained everything, all the aspects of why Sri Lanka is facing a crisis. Okay. And uh, what are the steps uh, they're supposed to take it? And what went wrong? Export and import. And uh, who are all the major players in terms of export and import? And what is the latest, uh, what do you call it, the relationship, what we have established in terms of MOU signed between India and Sri Lanka. All those aspects we have discussed in detail. If you have any queries, you can ask me.